Um, we have a new sponsor for the show. That's pretty exciting. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee will be sponsoring this new evolution of uh, the Anthony Cumia show with me as the host from now on. We have their first commercial, which I'm sure they'll be really happy about. You know, a long night of drinking and committing hate crimes with the boys can really leave you feeling a bit worse for wear. That's why all proud boys start their morning with a cup of Black Rifle coffee. Because nothing really quite gets you in the right headspace for oppressing minorities like a cup of Black Rifle. Oh, you can taste the bigotry. Black Rifle Coffee, official coffee of the Proud Boys worldwide. Use promo code PROUDYOURBOY at BlackRifleCoffee.com during your next purchase for a 15% discount. See, Anthony's been dead for like five hours and we're already hustling and bustling with new sponsors and making money. Promo code Proud Boys. There's a Proud Boy in the news. He got two years for talking shit. Now, you want to talk about black privilege. A black woman could do this all day and night, and she wouldn't get a slap on the wrist. But a MAGA person, a patriot, a Trump guy, a white male, starts talking shit, which we're not advocating here. You don't threaten people. But he's going to, get, he's going to do two years in prison? <laughs> Your app froze. South Carolina man linked to Proud Boy sentenced to 28 months in prison. Wait, that's not two years. Oh, well, it's a little bit more. A man convicted of threatening a formal f federal prosecutor uh, for her comments on the leader of the extremist group, the Proud Boys, will spend more than two years in federal prison. He was charged with making interstate threats. What was his threat? Does it have it? Do, 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 do. Tuesday, do, 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 do. attorneys showed a pattern with him. Starting with the riots on January 6th, the victim also spoke to the court over the phone telling the judge about the impacts these threats had on her life. She said they scared her co-workers and children and forced her family to take extra security. Dude, try being me, you fucking stupid bitch. I get threatened on a daily basis. Try being a Trump supporter. His lawyer called it a misguided passion. Um, his attorney said there was no planning involved in these threats. And he used his real name and phone number while making the calls, adding that he had been drinking and not slept the night before. His mother and wife gave emotional statements. Jesus Christ, he's going to be away from his family for two years. I would love to hear what he said. He probably said, you're fucking dead, bitch. Dude, I have so many of your dead motherfucker texts and emails that I had to delete some of them because they were filling up my phone. Keep going down. That's about it. There's nothing. So they don't say what it was. Yeah. Because I think it was phone calls. Yeah. Well, they should have the transcripts. Um, this, these are some kind of old stories. The Proud Boys were there. They openly lust for violence. I think I already covered that on my show. Uh, the feds who set them up were fucking retards. What's 2-5? The one who, who was accused yesterday of setting up financing and planning the whole Whitmer kidnap plot. Apparently, he smashed his wife's head in. Oh, yeah. So I hope I haven't covered this already. I'm, I'm dredg dredging up some old articles. But remember that kidna kidnapping the governor bullshit where it was nine guys were guilty. Six of them were feds. Three of them were poor bastards. Of those feds, a lot of them were fuckheaded retards, including some guy who beat the shit out of his wife and embedded her head into a fucking drywall after a swingers party. These are the moral people. FBI agent was of assaulting wife after swingers party argument. So this guy set up his wife, probably got her to fuck someone at a party, and then didn't like that she loved it. Maybe he was she was getting dicked down too hard, so he lost his temper and smashed her head against the wall. These are the people that are telling us that domestic terrorism from patriots is the biggest threat uh, in America. Oh, and then there was this. This was good. Two six. Uh, General Miller said that Trump wanted this coup, and he wanted the Proud Boys. That's why he said, "Stand down, stand by." And then they attacked everyone at the meandering, and that's exactly like the Germans in Normandy. So the pussy politicians that were sitting there crying in their chairs—they're uh, us. 
the soldiers who fought on the beaches. And then the Proud Boys and the Patriots who went there, those are the Nazis strafing the beach, leaving blood everywhere. These are the same people we fought in World War II. <laughs> We're going to put a ring of steel around this city and the Nazis aren't getting in. So the Nazis are still outside of the city? Isn't that bad? They're going to hurt people there. Uh, far-right groups like the Proud Boys might try to violently disrupt. I saw this thing, this hitmen thing. I don't think I put it in my notes. They were talking about how if you hire a hitman, then obviously the hitman's in trouble. He's, he's He was going to murder, like Joe, uh, T- what's his name? Joe Tiger? Tiger Joe? Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic. He wanted, he allegedly put a hit out on Carol Baskin. So the hitman's in trouble, but he's in trouble too. In fact, I don't think the hitman got in trouble. He just got in trouble for putting the hit out. It's illegal to put a hit out on someone. Therefore, Trump should go to jail because he put a hit out on the Capitol. And so the hitman are already in prison. The guy who put the hit out should be in prison too. These are adults saying this. These are not little kids. I don't mind it if it's some 14-year-old who just got into politics saying stupid shit like that. I would pat her on the head and say, good, you'll get it eventually. The interpretations of the meandering never cease to amaze me. They get more and more juvenile every day. Like this fucking rhino, Jonah Goldberg, who I used to like. I liked his book, uh, what was it, Tyranny of the Oppressed? Um... And the whole liberals of the new Nazis thing. That was a good book. Liberal fascism, I think it's called. So he's trying to be sincere here. What is the reigning MAGA theory of this of the January 6th meandering? Was it, one, a relatively harmless demonstration slash tourist visit full of quote-unquote love? So th- there's so much sarcasm in that, it's no longer an option. Two, an outrageous false flag operation run by Antifa slash BLM. They were there. Look at all these uh, these absolutes. Three, an even more outrageous FBI deep state operation intended to make Trump look bad. Uh, it was a relatively harmless demonstration. Uh, no one said it was full of love. Some people got out of hand, smashed some windows, and they did some trespassing and some vandalism. That's unfortunate. Don't do that. Bad, bad person. Naughty. Slap on the wrist. You should be charged with breaking a window like everyone else would. Uh, BLM doesn't get charged for their year and a half of rioting. But we're supposed to be the altruistic ones and say, okay, okay let's punish our, our friends for breaking a fucking window. They stayed within the ropes when they went in there. No, no, let's go back to the, the options. And then two, an outrageous false flag operation. All run, like Everything has to be run by BLM and Antifa. No, Antifa were there. John Sullivan was there. We have evidence they were there. So they were a factor in this. And then an even more outrageous. No, no, all of these are true, shithead. And the last one, yeah, there was some weird shit going on. We saw that there were six feds involved in the Governor Wichner kidnapping. And we all saw those cops pull down the barricades and go like this. Come on, come on. We also noticed that the staff, the cop staff, they were, they were, I've never seen so few people there. I, I was sent pictures that day of the cops, well, from that day, of cops that morning. And there was like six of them on the Capitol. What if some jihadist was going to run in that day? So that was weird, too. And also, Jonah, there's some unanswered questions. Here, go back to that tweet. If you go down a bit, I think uh, Dinesh D'Souza responded or someone. Oh, shit. I always think that these tweets are stagnant. But every time you check on them, they keep going. Because other people, sane people are going, "Uh, there's other options there, Jonah, you fucking dick. Oh, yeah, here's the thing. CF30, I think that has the uh, hitman analogy. Does it? Oh, here we go. Four, we were always at war with Eurasia? No, that's not it. <laughs> what the fuck? Go to uh, 30. Because Anthony sent me this shortly before he died of uh, this cop from the Capitol. And Capitol cops are pussies, by the way. There's the guys, the beat cops in Chicago, 
basically every American city, they, just, they end up having to spend most of their time in the black neighborhood. They get in fights. They get spat on. They have to see horrible things with neglected kids. If you guard the fucking pampered politicians in the Capitol, you're a pussy cop. I don't agree One with woman a in cab. A pink MAGA shirt yelled, "You hear that, guys? This nigger voted for Joe Biden." Then the crowd, perhaps around 20 people, joined in screaming, "Boo, fucking nigger!" Hold on. No one. Did all 20 people say in unison, "Boo, fucking nigger"? Because that's hard. You'd need you'd need someone there. Like, remember how we practice, guys? And one. Two and three. Boo, fucking nigger. Okay, let's do it three more times. And I'm going to say one, two, three. You're coming in early. It's on the end of fucking. <laughs> Some people are saying fucking and then nigger. It's fucking nigger. <laughs> we went through this in the auditions. And how many millions of hours of footage are there from the meandering? If this happened, we'd be seeing it for the rest of our lives. Oh, my God. That's like I always said I would take a bullet for Obama because I wouldn't want to hear for the rest of my life about how we had one black president and then we killed him. So if this actually happened, whole, we, first of all, we'd all already know by now. And it would be it would be our alarm clocks. We'd have to hear it every day until we all die or kill ourselves because we're so sick of hearing about it. It's just a fucking lie. He's just sitting there lying. He has no morals. No scruples. Just sits there and makes up a bunch of shit. <laughs> what a fucking loser. I bet you anything we'll start seeing footage, too, because people put it together of him and every interaction he had that day. And you're not going to see a lot of people saying weird racist shit in perfect unison. All 20 of them. What the fuck? Most of the we saw the people re talking to each other. People didn't know each other. There was the guy with the horns. He seemed to have a, about three buddies with him. But that was the biggest crowd of people on the same page as far as they came there together. Everyone else was just like in groups of one or two. So groups of 20 people saying racial epithets in unison. Not true. Not so. God, I wish Anthony was alive for that. Um, yeah, all cops are not bastards, but some are. Some are dicks. Look at this cunt Joy Reid defending Antifa. See, we noticed that there was, I'm going to say, this is what I personally believe. I know for a fact that John Sullivan was there. I know for a fact he's the one <clears throat> who encouraged Ashley Babbitt to jump in through the window, which led to her death. I know for a fact that CNN paid him $70,000 for his footage. I know for a fact that he showed cameras dressing up as a MAGA person, and he is Antifa. All that's facts. What I can't prove, but what I believe I saw in the footage is four or five Antifa looking goons at one of the barricades pushing it forward and egging people to move in. Did that lead to the entire thing? No, but it definitely helped get things going. So they were part of this thing. Doesn't mean they have to have controlled the entire insurrection. So what the left does is they say they take that one truth where Antifa was involved to a tiny degree, and they say, now these losers are saying Antifa did the whole thing, and there was no patriots there at all, and it was all people in disguise. That's See, they take your point, your truth, and they stretch it into ridiculous straw man hyperbole, and then they knock that down and think they've won. That's what Joy Reid does here in 2.8. I hate her. She's an immigrant, came here from Africa, goes to Harvard, and just shits on America all day. She's so smug, too, with this eye-rolling smile. <laughs> Grateful on today. What the fuck does that mean? The bird that is the bald eagle? What are you talking about? You mean grateful today? Grateful on today. That we won't be subjected to Jim Jordan screaming at these police officers. All, all of a sudden, she loves cops. Uh, and he and Rep. Jim Banks shrieking irrelevancies about Antifa and Black Lives Matter to distract from these crucial Jan 6 hearings and turn them into a Fox News circus. <laughs> I mean, that's another reason why I kept begging guys not to go, because I knew, just like Charlottesville, they would take this a couple freaks and extrapolate this into what is wrong with America, what's wrong with the right, blah, blah, blah. Don't give them that fodder. You know... Glenn Beck's producer says, how did you know that January 6th was going to be a mess? Prove it. I go, it's very simple. November, Proud Boys go there. 
for a rally. Um, they get stabbed by black thugs because a woman, black female conservative, started some shit. And they were they were threatening. They were about to kill some white guy in a suit. They were just hunting old white men for sport, like a safari. And she says, oh, hell no, we ain't doing this. Proud Boys could have de-escalated it and said, guys, what the fuck's going on here? But she jumps in, so they stab her. And then they say, I've been waiting all night for this. And they stab Enrique, another guy, and then Noble Beard. They stab him really bad. The, the takeaway is Proud Boys go to D.C. and stabbing ensues. That's the headline. Then a month later, they're in D.C. and they go to this conservative bar, Harry's, because the guy, owner's brother's a cop. I know him. And uh, some black Antifa dude shows up with a knife ready to rock. Again, Proud Boys could have de-escalated this, I think. But some bitch gets in there and she's like, oh, no, fuck this. And she grabs a knife, grabs him, rips his mask off, and then he stabs at her. They stop it. They get involved. They protect her and they get stabbed twice. Again, the headline is Proud Boys go to D.C. A stabbing ensues. And they even frame pictures of that article and cut out the guy's knife. So you just see, I think, a Proud Boys knife and you don't see the other guy coming in with his knife. Or maybe they probably didn't even have a knife, and they just cropped out the black guy's knife. Anyway, so that's two. And in that second rally, by the way, they did a great job. The Antifa really did some bad PR. They're beating up old people, old ladies. They attacked some black single mom who had her kid. So I was like, guys, please, thats I think you made your point. We're good now. You did great PR. Everything's awesome. And then there was January 6th. And Noble Beard came on the show and he said that he heard that they were giving out gun permits to people who had gun permits in other state, which DC's not big on the Second Amendment. So the assumption I made is if they are giving out gun permits, they're going to give it to liberals and lefties and not MAGA. And hopefully the shooting will ensue. And then, just like the previous two headlines, the headline would be Proud Boys come to DC, people get shot. So I said, don't walk into that trap. You got stabbed twice. Noble Beard was at both stabbings. So was Enrique. You got stabbed twice. Now you're going to get shot. And the media's takeaway will be, you lead to shootings. So please don't go. Now, the shooting things didn't pan out, but we saw that they used this as fodder, and they won't fucking shut up about it. The New York Times just gotten shit. Some Asian woman who, I guess she sees that there's... Asian hate crimes going on, so she decides to ignore the blacks doing it and put it on MAGA, and now MAGA are enemies of the state. She put out on Twitter, this is 2-9, that uh, we should be called enemies of the state. And when I say we, I mean not just the people that were at the meandering, but any Trump supporter. That's what they believe. Pull that fucking bitch up. New York Times reporter deletes tweet calling Trump supporters enemies of the state. You know why they use this vernacular? They don't say we're jerks or we're dicks or we have little dicks or we have mommy issues or any other sort of personal insight. Enemies of the state means they have to be arrested. They have to be put away. They are dangerous. That's a very communist way to behave. Um, go go up a little bit. No, no, not, not that far. Uh the DOJ scribe then suggested that, that since Congress left the investigation into the Republicans' alleged collusion with Russia and two impeaches unresolved, lawmakers could not be trusted to probe the deadly riot at the Capitol. Oh, it was so deadly. That leaves it up to voters, making even more essential free, fair access to the polls, she wrote. About eight hours later, the tweet and its thread were deleted and referenced uh, by a post by Benner that read, I deleted unclearly worded tweets. She got a call from her boss who said, you're going to get fired if you don't get that down. She did not further clarify why she deleted the, the, the tweets and if she did so with the paper's demand. Her comments were slammed by critics, including prominent journalists and lawmakers. That's the best summary of the Biden men's domestic national security strategy I've ever read. <laughs> this is a reporter, not an op-ed writer, saying this. The fixation on January 6th is about exactly this, classifying Trump supporters as enemies of the state for political gain and security state power. Perfect. Sums it up. Fantastic. And again, just like us meeting each other at the end of the circle, I think you're an enemy of the state and I want you arrested. Yeah, I know you do. 
That's clear. Like, why debate these people anymore? I want power over you. You support Trump. We just still don't know why they hate Trump, by the way. I've never heard a, a salient reason why Trump is the enemy. But they hate him. And if we like him, we have to go. We have to go to re-education camps. We are already going to re-education camps. We saw the Bernie bros say that at the Project Veritas thing. And then we had that guy who said, I think it was the one who called this golf ball a faggot. And he said, I am a homophobe. You're right. But I'm going to go to a, a center f- and learn how to de-homophobe myself. In other words, a re-education camp. <laughs> I am a homophobe. You got me. I, now together we have to fix it. I saw this COVID dude. Look at this fucking pussy, 3-3. Three, three. And the woman who put it up said... Uh, I have more testosterone than the average liberal today. Do you ever just sit around and suddenly remember that you've been living through an unprecedented traumatic crisis event for the past year and a half and will probably be dealing with the profound psychological consequences for years to come? What a fucking... I don't even want to say faggot. Faggots take huge dicks up their ass. That's probably very uncomfortable. He's sub-fag unprecedented traumatic crisis like sure if you're six i'm sure there will be long-term effects my youngest boy washes his hands for like two minutes every time he goes to the bathroom that's a long time to wash your hands and then my other covid moment is jen Psaki. uh i've never heard a press secretary say this he asks her a question about the vaccine and her response is why do you need that information most are asymptomatic if they are individuals who are vaccinated who get the virus. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are in a different place uh, in terms of the impact of individuals who may have, as you said, breakthrough cases. But why not just provide the number? Are you trying to hide something? No, but what is the why do you need to have that information? Most are. So she wants the reporter wants to know how many people have transmitted the disease after having the vaccine. Pretty important question. Dude, I'm hearing some scary numbers about people who have died from the vaccine. I'm hearing numbers like 60,000. 